It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. It seems as still that anti-white racism is practically normalized in my country. When I first started to cover this back in 2015 with videos from BuzzFeed and MTV News, I thought these kind of people who said this kind of stuff against white people were pretty much the fringe minorities during those time period. And of course, as we saw in the death of, you know, George Floyd, it seems as though that people are pushing their own political personal agenda against white people and are passing some really racist laws against them. And so for this video, I'm going to cover the laws that I found to be the most racist and share with you guys my thoughts and opinions about them. According to news in California, it seems as though that they want to get rid of equality for all people regardless of skin color, sexual orientation, gender identity, and so on. And of course, the people in this whole entire state are going to be required to vote on like the results starting in November. And honestly, I'm not surprised that they're doing this because mainly it seems as though that they're against the idea of colorblindness, that apparently whiteness is a huge problem in our society. And so when I heard this news that California wanted to get rid of protections based upon these sort of ideas, obviously that's of course no surprise to me when I heard about it for the first time. In the state of origin, it seems as though that white people were required to wear face masks. However, minorities such as black people were not required to wear the masks because of racial profiling. However, as soon as the news just hit the news stations across the whole entire country, of course, they reversed the decision. And, you know, it seems as though that they really, really do not care about the health of black people. If they actually, you know, you, you know, allow black people to wear the mask alongside with white people, that would actually prevent the spread of the virus. But by telling black people, hey, I'm not going to allow you to wear the mask because you're black and blah, 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 because of racial profiling, they're actually increasing the chance of black lives actually dying more. So, yeah, thank you for, you know, trying to actually pitch this idea in the first place. This flyer comes directly from the African American Museum in Washington, D.C. Talking about race, aspects and assumptions of whiteness and white culture in the United States, individualism, the individual is the primary unit, self-reliance, independence, and autonomy is highly valued, rewarded. Individual assumed to be control of their environment, you get what you deserve. Family structure, the nuclear family, mother, father, two or three children is the ideal social unit. Husband is the breadwinner and head of the household. The wife is a homemaker and subordinate to her husband. Children should have their own home, be independent. A emphasis on the scientific method, objective, Rational linear thinking, cause and effect relationships, quarantine emphasis. History, Protestant work acted, hard work is the key to success, work before play, if you don't meet your goals, you didn't work hard enough. Religion, Christianity is the norm, anything other than Judeo-Christian tradition is foreign, no tolerance for a diversion from a single God concept. Status, power, and authority. Wealth equals worth. Your job is who you are. Respect authority. Highly value on ownership of goods, space, and property. Future orientation. Plan for the future. Delay gratification. Progress is always best. Tomorrow will be better. Time. Follow a rigorous time schedules. Time is viewed as a commodity. Aesthetics. Based upon European culture, steak and potatoes. Blaine is best. Women's beauty standard based upon blonde, stan, Barbie. Mac male attractiveness based upon economic status, power, intellect. Holidays based upon Christian religions, based upon white history and male leaders. Justice based upon English common law. Protect property and entitlements. Intense counts. Competition. Be number one. Win at all costs. 
winner-loser dichotomy, action orientation, master and control nature, must always do something about a situation, aggressiveness and introversion, decision-making, majority rules when, ma when white people have power. I'm sorry, but how is this whole entire museum telling us that stuff like the family structure, justice, as well as individualism and the scientific method is inherently white people's things. Because this whole entire argument is inherently saying that black people are uncivilized and that white people apparently are more civilized than us. However, that is not true. Because I believe that of course, like all these stuff should be valued based upon the merit that they actually have. There's evidence that of course the family structure is actually a good thing. It actually have a better environment for kids. There's evidence that of course individualism is actually good and not collectivism. There's also evidence of course of the scientific method that is actually working, that we found stuff like gravity and evolution and these various scientific theories like the Big Bang. So, all the stuff that you just listed right now should be actually universal among people and not just white people. What's so sad about this is that this type of systematic racism is being sponsored by our tax dollars, Bill Gates, Target, Walmart, America Express, Ford, Oprah Winfrey, and many more people and organizations. And so, this type of racism is very much state-sponsored racism for white people in this country. Critical race theory is spreading rapidly through the federal governments. Last week, a whistleblower sent me a strong documents about a divisive diversity training at the Treasury Department. What I discovered is deeply disturbing and a front to equality. Buckle up. Oh, here we go. Here we freaking go. Federal investigation guy for difficult conversation about race in troubling times, a course sponsored by the Consumer Federal Protection Bureau, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, the Federal Housing Finance Agency, the Federal Reserve Bond, and so much more. Although recent events have led to a focus on systemic racism in law enforcement, the issues of systemic racism encompasses a variety of institutions as described in a series of short videos produced by Race Force Organization. Be clear about what it means to have the talk. Watch this YouTube video on what parents tell their children about surviving being black. Read this article to understand intersectionality and its impact on our daily lives, especially for black women. Take a deep history into oral history about the civil rights movement by spreading time in the collection gathered by the Library of Congress. Read the case for reparations, a powerful call to action to the rights of wrongs of 400 years of slavery, Jim Crow laws, and systemic racism. Watch, oh my god, this woman like Robin D. Angelo on YouTube, the author of White Fragility. She talks about how white people struggle to own their racism. Here's another while she discusses about the roots of white supremacy in which she asserts that virtually all white people, regardless of how woke they are, contribute to racism. In other words, this is like some sort of re-educational class for white people in this country at a federal level. And by the way guys, if you want to know more details about white fragility in that book, of course, I talked about it on my channel, but to summarize the entire book once again, the ideas are just absolutely ridiculous. If, if for example, states that of course minorities cannot be racist because of prejudice and power, that color blindness is also bad for some strange odd reason, and of course these other ideas. Conversational starters, there is so much learning to do about race, racism, and whiteness, which includes white privilege and white supremacy. Dr. Eddie Moore Jr., a motivational speaker, counsel and founder of the Privilege Institution, has gathered many resources to look for on these topics called the 21-Day Racial Equity Habit Building Challenge. Each is identified by format and length of commitment, reading, podcasts, videos, way to connect, and other categories, and is followed by 
how do you home your awareness which groups to consider following? It is imperative at this time that people who are white invest in race-based growth and development on topics such as systemic racism, civil rights history, unconscious bias, inclusion, and contemporary ideologies such as anti-racism, intersectionality, white privilege, and white fragility. Yet again, I'm going to ask this question. How is this no different than convergence therapy? Creating safe spaces. Oh my god, I have not heard that word in like since 2015, 2016. So it's like a long time since I said the word safe space in my vocabulary. If you're a white manager in your organization, it's important to ask yourself, what is the right action for me to take? Given that talking about issues relating to racism can be confronting, we're frequently silent because we don't know what to say or what to do. It's important to note that everyone processes at their own pace. Some people you reach out may share openly about what they're feeling, or you may encounter a colleague who is still processing and doesn't know what to say or doesn't feel safe or ready to share with you. Be mindful of your own need to potentially fill the science with your own personal thoughts and feelings, noting that this is really helpful, especially if you feel inspired to challenge their commentary. It's never okay to try to talk someone out of their experience. However, it is okay to listen and just get where they're coming from. Give your colleagues space and opinions. Be very careful not to make the conversation about you unless you have a strong shared experience. In other words, put up or shut up. So yeah, unless you're, you know, someone who's actually white and actually managed a whole entire building, yeah, I'm sorry, you cannot talk because you're white. And the only way you can talk is, of course, if you had the same sort of experience. So yeah, this is not gonna go well pretty well, I'm pretty sure. Don't perpetrate white silence. Given the demographics of this country, white silence has been one of the most powerful distractors from real progress in social justice. White people can feel badly, be scared, think that killing black people is awful, that an all-male and or all-white leadership team shouldn't be allowed to continue, that the educational panel didn't have any people of color or women, that the new class of interns is all white, or the migrant of other examples of conscious or conscious biased actions. Everyone has a responsibility for bringing attention to this, with the stated values of the organization and the federal government. This type of re-educational training for white employers is not anything new because the state of Washington also had the same sort of procedure for white people in that whole entire state. And of course, I haven't heard any sort of complaints or calls or whatever about the discrimination that the white employers also face in that whole entire state. Ever since the death of George Floyd, it seems as though that we're getting more and more and more discriminatory laws based upon race for white people. And I'm just sick and tired of listening to this kind of news because honestly, this whole entire idea of discriminating people based upon their race is no different than the Jam Crow laws. Of course, the Jam Crow laws mistreated really badly the black people in this country. And so, how is fighting fire with fire is going to help anything else? Because you see, if you fight fire with fire, you're not going to resolve anything. You're going to make racial tensions actually worsen because of this whole entire re-educational programs for white people. And honestly, the fact that of course, like the museums, like the African American Museum for History is using our tax dollars to fund this kind of racist crap, it's just sad, it's prosthetic, and honestly, I think that more and more people should speak out. I see him as the, like the only person in this sort of like kind of spear right now that's actually speaking out against this kind of stuff, but I think more and more people can actually speak out against this because honestly, this type of behavior is not okay, not in the slightest. But what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below. And I'll talk to you guys next time.